I'm here with the owner of Lux Detailing and Window Tent. Introduce yourself for the people who don't know your name yet. I'm Wade Murrow. Nice to meet you, Wade. Um, what year and how did you get started with window tinting and detailing? So first year of operations when we started was 2020. Uh, we kind of got into this because I was working in the mines at the time. Uh, five, six days a week, I had third shift. So during the day, I had a little extra time to kind of go out and explore uh, different streams of revenue to try and create something uh, that would kind of substantially hold me and my family uh, for the weeks and months of the year uh, to pay for everything we needed. I jumped into detailing uh, head first, uh, something I've always had a passion for, clean cars, and then just, you know, I mean, that customer service you're able to build off, off cleaning a car that was dirty uh, and then being able to give them something that was like new again, uh, it's always been a passion that I've had. So I kind of jumped into it and we built it, I built the brand. I uh, started out with a mobile unit. Uh, for people who don't know what that means, a mobile unit is kind of like a trailer. We had an enclosed trailer. We had everything on it and we kind of come to the customer. Uh, but I wanted to kind of maximize the revenue that was coming in. So uh, at that time, I decided to kind of go a different route and find a building or a facility that would hold me, my crew, and uh, all our equipment we had. So I ended up getting a house, and we kind of did it out there for a while until we found a building that would sustain what we wanted. Um, we ended up finally coming to Waverly about two and a half months ago, and it has been kicking uh, better than I could ever imagine and we're just growing from here so uh, that was the biggest biggest start uh, with the detailing side on a tree service as well um, and you know I mean I I enjoy it but this is something I wanted to build uh, from day one of doing it the window tenting kind of came around after we were uh, sitting around talking about different ways we could kind of bring a little more uh, revenue into the business and um, me and a buddy, we were, we were talking and he, he was like, man, there's no one who does window tinting. And I looked at him and I was like, no, there isn't. I was like, any guy that's around here, most of the time he's not there. He's got a different facility that he works out of. I said, uh, I think I'm gonna do window tinting. So I started uh, exploring, getting my hands and feet wet on it, trying to learn uh, the art of window tinting. And it was very, very, very um, nerve wracking. I'll put it that way. So I ended up finding a guy, Mike Burke. One of, he's a great man. He's Sunstoppers uh, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I got in contact with him while he was in Croatia. Funny thing about that is I was actually, we were, my wife just had our, our, four, our fourth girl, Sailor. So we were in the, in, the, in the hospital waiting for everything to get discharged, come home. And I reached out to him on a forum on Facebook and he told me, he said, hey, can I, can I give you a call? And I said, sure. So he called me, I was right there in the midst of just having a baby. And uh, he said, I'll tell you what, if you come to Charlotte, North Carolina, I'll show you the ins and outs of window tinting, how to do it, how to properly uh, decontaminate the windows. That way you have a, a film that lays down perfect and you're able to give a, a, a good quality product to the customer uh, when they pick up the vehicle. And I, was, I talked to him and of course, price is always everything. Uh, when, when we're trying to do stuff like that, because there was me and another guy going, so I knew uh, price had to be right, especially coming into uh, what they call the dead season uh, for any auto detail, window tint and all that. So uh, he, he, he gave me a deal I couldn't refuse, turned down. So I ended up going to Charlotte, North Carolina, me and uh, <clears throat> the guy who works with me, Paxton, and we learned the art of window tinting. And uh, every day we learn something new. We don't learn everything uh, in one week. We, we, we dang sure don't learn it overnight. So uh, w once we got back from that class, um, we were able to kind of dive in head first and get our feet wet completely and uh, learn that art. And it's, it's just an uphill stride from here. Okay, okay. How'd you come up with the name Lux Detailing and Window Tent? I know the uh, detailing and window tent part of it, but why Lux? Lux, so... Um, that's a good question. A lot of people ask me that a lot of times, actually. So Lux, I was uh, <laughs> I was on fa on Facebook and I was going through a lot of stuff, just trying to find names, something that would fit with what I wanted it to be. And I'm not only looking to, uh, I guess, give a name to a company. I'm wanting to build a brand. I'm wanting to build something that no one can ever forget when they hear 
detail on her window tint, I want them to think Lux. So Lux, uh, obviously it stands for a few different things, but luxurious is something that I always think of when I think Lux. So when I'm putting out any type of, any type of finished product, um, I want the customer just to be look at it, looking at it and just be like, gosh, this is luxurious. You know what I mean? This is perfect. It looks better than when I first bought it. So Lux kind of stuck with it uh, through the Lux mobile detailing, then uh, just the Lux detailing, then now Lux detailing and window tint seem to be uh, body wraps added onto that as well. So. Okay, I like that. Um, how many employees do you currently have? Currently have right now for the Lux um uh, Lux part of everything. We have four employees. Um, I have my videographer, photographer who kind of books in appointments and uh, takes care of all my social media um, side of things. And then I have another guy <clears throat> that does, he's been doing the detailing for a while. Um, he started out on his own and I, own and I kind of reached out to him and I was like, hey man, uh, why don't you try and come out you know, I mean, with me and uh, I'll teach you the ins and outs of everything that I've learned over the years and uh, make sure you're making more than you're making now on your own. And he came out uh, and first time we had to learn a little bit, to, you know, I mean, with each other. But at the end of it, uh, I'm glad he came and I'm glad he's here. He puts uh, forth effort every day to be a part of this team and show where he stands with everything. So. Um, He's a good one. Then I got another guy. He's kind of part-time, I guess you would say. He's kind of going into his own side of business with uh, barber school, but <clears throat> he started with me when I was doing the mobile side of things. And uh, he, he's the same way. You know, I mean, he just shows up every day. He, he hustles, he grinds, he, uh, he wants to make sure the customer's completely happy every single time they come to pick up a vehicle. And, you know, I mean, both those guys, I just I couldn't be more happy to to have them here with me, uh, be a part of this team. And uh, then, you know I mean, even though I'm the owner, I still get a cut, you know what I mean? Each week I don't just take all the money and kind of run with it and do my own thing with it. So I kind of count myself as an employee. I don't put myself no higher than the guys that are here hustling and grinding with me every day. Uh, we do the same things together um, throughout the day. There are some times that I gotta take, you know I mean, a, a little leave to take care of some other things. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's us four right now. Um, I guess you could say pretty much uh, five uh, because I got a guy with the vinyl wrapping who will be down here December, well, no, we're, <clears throat> we'll just say January 1st. Um, he's been doing this for over 20 years and um, he's, he takes care of vinyl wrapping, window, window tinting, uh, residential uh, home window tinting. Uh, he's just going to be a huge asset to have, and um, I can't wait to have him here. So, yeah, I guess you'd say five instead of four. Okay, okay. Um, so, I, I know everyone sees cars rolling in and out of here, and they, they wonder, like, how much you're making and stuff like that, and they never see, like, the the bad days and stuff like that. So, what would you say your biggest month you've had is? Biggest month? Uh, we've, we've had a few. Uh, <laughs> as far as numbers, I don't ever put that out there. But uh, my guys know what we bring in, um, and they they're, they're paid percentages of stuff, so they see what we make, um, and then they see the, the bad days as well. You know, I mean, I don't ever sit there and try and put on a front to people like we just make money every single day, and there ain't ever bad days. You know, what I mean, with any good week, you're bound to have a bad week that comes with it. I mean, that's just the name of the game, and. Uh, until we fully build this brand and get where we want to with the different multiple locations we plan to have in the future um, We're gonna have bad days. We're not always gonna have you know, I mean good days and good weeks and good months We're gonna have you know, I mean bad days mixed into them. So um, I tell people all the time It ain't about how much I make one month. It's about the continuous growth of the company And that's where that's where we're kind of focused on right now getting to okay. Okay um if you, if you had to give a piece of advice to someone trying to get into business and uh, starting up a new business, what would it be? Piece of advice. Live every day like it's your last. Not only in the business, building it, or even at home. I mean, just yourself in general. I mean, make sure the people that come in that meet you, they never forget you. Uh, and try and leave that on a good way, not always, you know, I mean, a bad way. Uh, definitely, you know, I mean, put your foot 
where it needs to be. And uh, when it comes time to uh, putting out the product, the finished product, do whatever you can to make sure it's perfect. I've had times mm -hmm. where we've had a piece of, uh, you know, I mean, a vehicle go out and it wasn't 100%. And uh, there was a few mess ups where we did it. And I told the customer, I'll do whatever I can to make it right. You know, I mean, it's just, it goes back to uh, learning. Uh, there's a few few times we've had had problems like that, but I will always say, if you can do what you can to try and make that right, you'll keep a customer uh, longer than just that that quick money you got and then knew it wasn't 100%. So just always do what you can to make it right. Um, don't worry about that quick money. Uh, that, that quick money, I don't care what anyone says, quick money is bound to have an end to it uh, if you're not giving out good quality work. So always make sure quality comes over the quantity and then once everything gets in its, I guess, flow of things, um, you'll be able to sit back and realize it was all for, for a good, good reason. So that's, that's my biggest advice is um, make sure you stand behind your product. I mean, just point blank, that's, that's the gist of it all. Stand behind what you put out because if you don't, you'll be like many of these small businesses who uh, they're gone within a year. And I hate to say it in a small town like we have because there's so much opportunity in small towns, uh, but there's so many people that don't wanna, I guess, uh, give the business or you know, I mean, try them out. So um, that's a piece of advice and learn how to network. Uh, if you don't know how to network and you don't know how to talk to people, you won't ever make it. I mean, you just won't. You gotta be able to learn how to network get in there, get your feet wet. You know, I mean, it ain't always comfortable, it's not. Um, but if you can talk to someone and let them know what you do, show them, uh, you have, you have a, a higher percentage of getting that work versus, you know, I mean, being shy and not being able to talk to them, so. That's a good piece of advice. I have one last question for you. Where do you see Lux in five years? Whew. Boy, I got imagination out of this world. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of people, they tell me, uh, especially when I started this, they said, Man, you got a good imagination, but can you put it into realistic terms? Uh, and to be honest, I've I've done I've I've, I've done it uh, in, in many many ways. A lot of people saw me not being able to make lux uh, anything, and uh, we're striving. You know, I mean, this is the down season and everything, and uh, we're still still kicking right now, doing great. Um, five years, so five years, I expect to have at least three to four different locations. Um, and this is just kind of a, a start right now, um, our first real location in Waverly, Kentucky. But I would say here within 2023, I wanna have, I'm, no, it's not one, I'm gonna have a spot in Henderson, Kentucky. Uh, and based on how the uh, revenue stream from it, uh, Henderson's definitely big enough to sustain two locations with Lux. Uh, detail and window tint and uh, vinyl wrapping. So we may put another location in Henderson as well, and then that'll be three locations. And then uh, before 2024, uh, we will have a spot in Evansville, Indiana. So uh, that's that's my goal. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, bigger things to come out of it. So that's, I guess that's my five year uh, plan for Lux. Thank you for your time, Wade. Thank you, guys.